glad to be in church, say amen this morning. Amen. Well, let me hear it one more time. If you're glad to be here, say amen. amen. All right, I wanted to make sure because it might be the last time I get an amen from you today. But it's good to see you, man. I'm so glad to be here. I told Brother Dusty, I don't know if I'm more excited about preaching right now or if I'm more excited about vision night tonight. I, I, I can't wait to come in here tonight at 6 o'clock and tell you what God has laid on my heart for this church and for the next year. Some of you here know me really well. Some of you don't know me at all. But if you know me, you know one thing. I don't believe in sitting back, relaxing, and celebrating what God's done. I, it's never been what God's put on me. God has always reminded me, hey, I've done great things, but i got great things to do. And I want you to know today, if you're one of those people that are watching TV and you're getting tied up in knots about all kinds of stuff and you're thinking, well, the church is done, the devil's winning, the world's going to win, I want to say this to you today. That's not the case. God's got a plan for the church of Jesus Christ right now in 2020 and nothing can stop the church of God. And some of you ought to say, man, some of you, well, man. But I just want to tell you, boy, I'm excited tonight. Tonight is a night we get to come together. We're going to have a time of worship. They're going to sing. We're going to worship. It's going to be awesome. I love it. Sing as loud as you want, as long as you want. It's going to be good. And then we're going to have a time of vision. I'm going to get up here and tell you what God's put on my heart, what God's put on my mind for 20, the rest of 2020, and, the, and then 2021. Our staff will come up. We'll share with you guys, and we're super excited about it. So you come back tonight at 6, grab some coffee. Super casual. Don't dress up. I'm not. I'm going to be a t-shirt. You hear me? So don't, don't come in here dressed up make me feel bad. Don't do it. I'm not going to be preaching to you. We're just going to be talking to you. And if you don't want to know what's going on here, you need to be here tonight. And you know what's going on. You know how you can get involved to make the vision of God possible right here in our area. So I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. Don't let me down. Look, I'm looking right now. I'm, i got a list. I'm putting you on if you ain't here tonight. Some of you are like, well, preacher, it's not, you know, Sunday night, I can't come back. Yes, you can. But anyway, it's good to see. If you're a guest here for the first time, thank you for being here. I appreciate you coming and worshiping with us today. And you say, preacher, I, this is my first time. Can I come to Vision Night? Anybody can come to Vision Night. You don't have to be a member. We just want to put you in the know of what God's going to do, and we're super excited about it. But thank you so much for being here. It's great that you've come to worship with us. We hope you feel comfortable. We hope you feel welcome. And if you need anything, please let one of us know be glad to help you in any way we can. Last week, if you weren't here though, you missed the brand new sermon series we started called The Elephant in the Room. Now, how many of you all know what The Elephant in the Room is? It's that thing that you know is going on, but nobody wants to talk about it. How many of you all know it? You know what I'm talking about? We all got that in our family. We got it in our, in our jobs. There's something going on. We all trying to avoid it like it's not happening. Well, in the church, there's one word that when I mention it, it sucks all the air out of the room. You know what that word is? It's money. See, there are some of you can't breathe right now. You're about to have a heart attack. Listen, I, I know when I say money or politics, some of y'all in here is like, oh, preacher said the two words you're not supposed to say in church. And, and we preach about money, and it just makes you worry. But listen, don't, don't, get, don't, don't get tied up. I ain't preaching on giving. But we are talking about money. Last week, we talked about contentment. We said that the Church of Jesus Christ and the United States itself is never content with all the stuff we got. And I said that we need to learn that no matter what's going on, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what position we find ourselves in, guess what? We're to be content. Be content. Now, today I'm talking about investing. You know, you know what I'm talking about when I say investing? Some of you are thinking 401K, ain't you? Some of y'all are thinking, man, I, I, I'm thinking about a, 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 a retirement fund. That's what you're thinking about, isn't it? Now, I want to say this to you. Everybody ought to have one of those. Everybody ought to have one. But that ain't what we're talking about. I want to make a statement that's even greater today. Now, I want you to get this. Are you ready? Our whole lives are one giant investment. Whether we realize it or not, we are always investing in something. The question is, what is the return going to be on our investment? You ever buy a house? You buy a house, you think, well, if I buy this house, living it five years, I can sell it for this amount of money, right? Anybody here ever said, man, I'm going to buy this house, I'm going to lose $20,000, I'm going to sell it. Give me three of those. <laughs> you ever do that? No. When you buy a house, you're thinking, what's, the, what's, the, what's it going to make over time, right? Nobody in here said at the car dealer, the car dealer said, look, this thing going to lose $20,000, you need to get, yeah, give me half three of those. You, you don't do that, do you? Everybody wants the return 
on their investment. Everybody wants to make money. Don't none of us want to lose money when we invest in, right? You buy something, you look at the end, and you go, okay, if I buy it, I'm going to make that out of it, right? Well, I want to say this to you, that every person here is investing with your life. I want to clear this up before we ever get in the sermon. I'm not asking you if you're investing. I'm making the statement that every person here, whether you realize it or not, you are investing your life into something. The difference will be, what is the return going to be on your investment? When it's all boiled down, when you get down to the end of all of it, what are you going to have to show for what you've invested over your lifetime? How many of you realize that every person in this room, God's given you gifts, God's given you time, God's given you talent, God's given you ability, God's given you resources, and every day we live, you know what we do? We take those resources God has given us, and whether we realize it or not, we are investing in something. The question I have is at the end of Matt Morrell's life, what will the return be on it? What will I have to show for a life lived and my resources invested? Everybody with me? Y'all with me? And this morning, I want to answer the question, what are we investing in? We are investing, but what is it that we're investing in? Now, take your Bible or your copy of the Word of God or your iPhone or your iPad or just look up on the screen and look at Matthew chapter number 6. Now, Jesus is speaking here, and I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but every time Jesus is talking, his answer to questions are always harder than our answer. You know, Jesus wasn't really a feel-good preacher, was he? Jesus was always like, you ask the question, here's the answer, deal with it. I mean, that's how Jesus deals with stuff. The stuff he tells us is hardcore. I mean, it's just like no, no, no whipped cream, no cherry on top. It's just, here's truth, deal with it. Now, in, in Matthew chapter 6, and verse 19, we're going to read through verse 21, and then we're going to skip down, we're going to read verse 33. But between verses 21 and 33... Jesus deals with all the things in our life that we invest in. All the things in our life that we invest our resources in. And we're going to answer some questions about that today. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read verse 19 through 21. And then we're going to skip down to verse 33. Notice what it says. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But seek ye first, verse 33, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Notice, all these things shall be added unto you. Let's pray. Father, I pray this morning that you would take the burden that you've placed in my heart. God, the burden that you've put on my mind. And God, I ask you to transfer it to every person sitting in this room. God, I ask you to take this burden and transfer it to all those who are watching online this morning. God, that you would speak into their heart a burden to invest in the right things, to God, to take their resources and to invest them in the right places in their life. God, I pray that you would bless us as we preach. God, help us open our hearts, open our minds, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus gives us these terms. He says, lay down that treasure for yourself on, on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what he's talking about is investment in our life. He's talking about what we invest in on a daily basis. Now, the first question I have, because I've got three questions for you, is number one, notice this with me if you will, what are we investing in? What is it that we are investing in? And if you notice the first one here, in verse number 19, he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. The first question I have for you this morning is, are we investing in stuff? Does everybody know what I'm talking about when I say stuff? That's all that junk we own. Everybody talking about it? That's all that junk we own. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about, stuff. 
Now, notice what Jesus says about this stuff. He says, lay down for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. Now, anybody know what, anybody know what a mothball is? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Now, apparently, moths eat clothing. Apparently. I mean, I've never had a problem with it, but apparently our grandparents did. Because every grandparent's house had mothballs in it. You know what I'm talking about? You think to yourself, why did they have mothballs? I never have moths eating my clothes. But you know, apparently moths do that kind of thing. I don't know. I, I never have had that problem. But how many people understand what rust means? You understand what rust is? Rust is easy to understand. Go to Walmart, let somebody ding your vehicle and knock the paint off your door. In about two days, you know what that ding will look like? It'll start looking rusty. Why? Because that exposed metal, when that moisture hits it, it immediately begins to break down. Now, here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus says, why are you investing in all this stuff? Because this stuff is just going to go away. How many of you realize that everything on this earth, all your stuff, is stuff that's fading away? You ever bought a car and six months later the thing had a noise? Huh? You ever had that happen? You ride down the road, you hear, whoop, whoop, whoop. you're like, what is that? Things breaking down on you, ain't it? You buy a new truck, guess what? Ain't long, that thing start having problems, won't it? I I'm amazed you buy a $40,000 truck and it seems like in six months you need a new set of tires on it. You're like, what in the world? I just bought a brand new truck, now I'm buying tires. You know why? Tires wear out. I don't care what you buy. The minute you buy a house, guess what you got? Problems. And if you married, you really got problems if you buy a house. <laughs> My wife can be walking through the house going, whoa, 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 what is this ding in the wall? I walked by that thing 10 years, never see it. We got to get this fixed. You know why? Because your house is starting to fall apart right now. The minute you buy it, it starts to deteriorate on you. You build that thing brand new and it don't seem like long. You've got this scuff and this problem and this mark. Why? Because they just fall apart. That's what they do. They just fall apart. Why? Because the things that we own on this earth, they just, they just die on us. They just run out. Everything you own is temporary. I said this last week, and I mean it. America's the only country where we got an attic full of junk, we got a crawl space full of junk, and we have to rent a, un a, a rental unit to put more junk in there that we ain't seen in two years. Amen. And that stuff's just going away, going away, going away. It's temporary. None of it lasts forever. Can I just say this? That not only is our stuff temporary, but even our own bodies are temporary. Amen. Me and my wife, we went out of town for a couple days for her birthday. I said, babe, what do you want to do for your birthday? You know what she says? Let's go hiking. I'm like, isn't that like a really long walk in the woods? Sounds like a great time, not. We were in the mountains. It's up one hill or down a hill. I can't even feel my calves right now. You know why? Because this body I got, it's falling slam apart. I got an elbow hurts just for no apparent reason. I got an ankle, it just hurts all the time. Don't matter what I do, it just hurts all the time. I got a shoulder that wakes me up in the middle of the night. You know why? I'm falling slam apart. That's what's going on. My body is wearing out. My body's temporary. It don't last long. And Jesus is asking the question, are you investing in stuff that will not last? By the way, when I do die, you know what my kids are going to do? Yeah, they're not going to bring my stuff down to the grave and bury it with me. Oh, no, I won't be dead. My house be sold. <laughs> They'll be at the beach having a big time with my money. That's what's going to happen. Some of you in here, will you work and you save and you do not? Your kids will blow through that in nine months. <laughs> Very rash, everything you work for, Gracie will spend it tomorrow. <laughs> because it's temporary. It don't last. It's not made to last. It's only here for a little while. It's gone. You see, when we invest in stuff... We get very little return because it is temporary and it fades away on us. But I want you to see the second thing Jesus asked. Now, this is the part that some of you here will struggle with more. Some of you here don't care about stuff, but notice what it says. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? What he's saying is, who here can make themselves taller than they are? Now, I want you to understand, he's not talking about everybody there wanted to be tall. That wasn't the issue. You see, what happens is... People want their position to be increased in life. They want something that they feel like elevates them in a way where when people look at them, they go, oh, oh, he's important. 
You see, many of us are investing in our positions in life. Some of you here, you are climbing to the top of your job. You're trying to go as far as you can with your job. You want to get to be the big guy, the big boss, the big title, because you think somehow that stuff's going to somehow complete you and make you happy. Some of you can't enjoy your jobs because you're too busy trying to climb the ladder of your job. Rather than doing a good job, you're looking for who you can step on to get to that next place. We love titles, don't we? We want to be the supervisor of what? We want to be the big dog of this. We want somebody to look at us and think that we're somebody. And many of us are trying in our lives. We want our position to soar to the cloud. So one day people will look up at us and go, man, look how awesome they are. And sometimes we think that that position will bring happiness to our life. But how many people realize position won't bring happiness? You know how I know people like to look good? You know how I know? Because women love the term doctor in front of a man's name. I saw a meme that said, you know, as we get older, women got makeup and some of us men got money. Sometimes that social status makes us feel like, hey, I'm more eligible because I'm doctor so-and-so, right? You know, people are going to dig me. If I was just regular old so-and-so, nobody would want me. Sometimes we think those titles and those things pull us up. But you know how I really know that most of us like status? You know how I know? Instagram and Facebook. Instagram is the funniest thing in the world to me. It's the funniest thing in the world. Some of you people, when I see your pictures posted, I don't even recognize you. You know why? You got like nine filters on. I wouldn't know you if I had to. You know, the older we get, you know what we realize when we go to take that selfie? I can't take it like this, Wayne. I got a double chin. I got to get it up here like this. Get that thing stretched down. Get the right angle. Bam. Put about three filters on it, guess what? Well, I'm posting that dude. Because you know what? I want people to look at me and think I'm somebody I'm not. Isn't that what we all do? Sure it is. We put things on there. We never put who we really are, do we? We always want to build it up and look like we're the perfect guy or the perfect gal or the perfect family. I'm just going to warn you, Christmas is coming, y'all. You're going to have to look at so many pictures of people's kids at the Christmas tree farm that little kid's going to be sitting there in his little sweater with a scarf on, looking all cute, you know, up against the tree. And you know good and dang well, that kid was screaming, hollering, running, mama done threatening 42 times. And then they go, bam, they take that picture and they put it on the thing like, look how awesome my kid is. But I know your kid's bad. I've met them. <laughs> you ain't fooling me. I know what little kid it is. But that's what we do, don't we? What do we want everybody to think? Oh, look at them in their Hallmark Christmas movie. That's what we're trying to do. Right. You know, you and your wife fight, cuss each other out. <laughs> Some people don't do that, preacher. Yes, they do. I know, y'all. I know. Don't listen. It's real here. Y'all try to come in here in the back door. Praise the Lord, preacher. You're doing right. Good to see you. I know you fall all the way here. I know that. <laughs> I, I, I've been there. I've been that guy walking into church, man as I can be. And hey, preacher, good to see you. God's good, ain't he? Yeah. As soon as we walk out door, we start fighting the rest of the way home. We're going to finish this thing. You and your wife on Instagram, though, that ain't how you look. Y'all look like Mr. and Mrs. Schwanky. And everybody else is going, man, I wish I could have a marriage like they have. They're just always down there, you know, vacationing and doing all these things. No, no, no. They just don't put what they really are on there. They put what they want you to see they are. You, you understand, how many people understand that when you see that, that, that plate and that beautiful food picture that that person takes, they don't turn around take a picture of the dishes ain't been washed in three weeks and the house ain't been clean. They just take a picture of that because they want you to think they just super chef cooking just awesomeness. That's what they want you to think. Look here, all these people posting gym photos, they don't, pour, they don't post pictures of them with the pork lines in their mouth. I'm telling you, they don't. You see, America is worth about being Facebook famous, TikTok famous, right. Twitter famous. We'd rather have 100,000 likes on some social media platform than to have three real friends in our lives. Right. You know why? Because we want to position somehow that when people scroll the page, I go, oh, oh, I, I want to be like them. 
You see, what we're seeking is we want this position in our life. And Jesus says, nobody in here can lift themselves up higher than they already are. Why are you seeking to do that? Why are you investing in that? And by the way, folks, this fake position you put yourself in, it does not pay off in the end. Jesus constantly warned us about being a Pharisee, which was being fake, being phony. How many of you realize all that stuff catches up with you? You know, I, I told somebody a long time ago, when I preach up here, I don't want y'all to think I'm somebody I'm not. I want you to understand I'm in the same boat you're in, paddling the same way you are, because, listen, I can't throw stones because I live in a glass house myself. And understand this, that being fake and phony, it never pays off. You can invest in that fake life all you want, friends, but I want you to know there, there's no return on that life. There's no return on that life. Be who God made you. Well, I see it all the time. Hey, listen, Christmas is coming. I'm just warning you. You have to see how good all these parents are. Yeah. Let me just remind you, when you realize, when you feel like you ain't got your kids enough, you probably got them about the right amount. Don't let social media talk you into spending too much on your children. Yeah. That's free. That has nothing to do with a sermon. <laughs> Preacher, I just want to get them everything. You can never get them everything. Right. Never. Let me give you this third thing. I got to be quick, y'all. I got to save up some of this energy, man. I mean, I had a double shot espresso and a Coke Zero before I preached today. <laughs> but I want you to see the third thing. Verse 31 says, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Some of y'all right now think about where you're going for lunch. Don't you lie right now. <laughs> Somebody's writing notes right now. You want to go to Mexican or do you want Italian? <laughs> or what we shall drink, or wherewith we shall be clothed. You see what Jesus was saying is, well, are you investing in your comfort? Oh, How many of you realize that America is the, the, the country that is obsessed with comforting ourselves? That's right. I'm going to say some things here, and some of you are just going to disagree with me like crazy, and that's okay, and, and I can take it. Y'all won't get mad, will you? But understand this. How many of you have seen this on Facebook? Well, I deserve this. You ever see that? Yeah, you ever see that? That take care of yourself because no one else will. Anybody ever seen that on Facebook, Instagram? You know what that is? Anti-Christianity. Listen, the American dream is not Christianity. The American dream says take care of you and forget everybody else and get all you can get. That's not Christianity today. You see, what we find here is that what most people are investing in is their own comfort, their own pleasure, their own thing, their own vacations, their own self-gratification. I see this spa day because I deserve it. What do you really deserve in life? I mean, really, what, who here is entitled to anything? Because you're breathing, you deserve something? You, everybody with me? But that's not what I see on bumper stickers, T-shirts, and the spa window. It says, take care of you, take care of you, satisfy you, comfort you. Friend, I want you to know today and understand this with me, that there is nothing you can buy that will make you happy. You can't get enough pedicures and manicures and tans and gym memberships and golf clubs and country club members. You can't get enough of that to make you happy in life. You can't. Can't buy it. Can't experience it. It's not how it works. You know, we always forget that verse. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You know why it's more blessed to give than to receive? Because it is. You see, happiness doesn't come from what you can get. Happiness comes from what you can provide others with. I don't know if you know this feeling. You ever, you ever Christmas come around like I'm, I'm old now, so Christmas is not about me getting up in the morning getting, right? But you ever buy your kids something and you can't wait to give it to them? You ever do that? There's nothing more fun than buying something you want for somebody else. Really. Because what happens is you're just dying to give it to them. You're like, man, do I have to wait until Christmas? I don't know if me and my wife have ever given each other Christmas gifts on Christmas. Because I'm like a 10-year-old. If I buy it on Thursday, we're getting it on Friday. Woo. I mean, I'm just how I am. It was, you don't hide it? No, no, I couldn't sit in the bed with it in the attic. <laughs> No. You know why? It just makes me feel good yeah. to give her something or give the kids something. And we feel that way when we give the children something. And you understand that that's the way happiness really is derived in life. It's not through what can I get. 
but what can I give? You know, some of us in here, we find somebody and say, hey, I'm going to make that dude's life better. I'm going to invest in that person until their life's awesome. You know what would happen? There'd be a happiness sneak in us. We wouldn't even realize it. Because it ain't all about you. You know, America teaches all about you. It's all about you. What do you want? What do you like? Listen, it don't matter what you want or what you like. Find somebody, give them what they want, what they like. It'll help you in ways you've never experienced. But now here's the question. Here's, I know what y'all are thinking. But preacher, you're trying to say that living a Christian life is supposed to be miserable. You're like, preacher, I, I can't have nothing. You know, you're like, preacher, you're just hammering us. Can't can I have stuff? Can't I have position? Can't I have comfort in my life? And the answer is, yes, you can. You know, when we go through Scripture, I can find a lot of people in the Bible had a lot of stuff. I mean, Abraham was doing all right, wasn't he? King David, I think he had it all right, Solomon. I think I can go all the way through the Old Testament. There's a lot of people had a lot of stuff. Is God against stuff? No, he's not against stuff. Think about people like Nicodemus, yeah. Joseph of Arimathea, rich people. God never got on for being rich. He's glad. That's how Jesus got a tomb, by the way. Joseph had money. He said, hey, this is my tomb. So is there anything wrong with having position? Well, David was a king. Abraham was a patriarch. I looked through and Paul was an apostle. Is there anything wrong with having a title? No. Is there anything wrong with having comfort? Well, of course not. The Bible says every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father above. All these things have been given to us to do what? Enjoy. Yeah. Say, preacher, well, you just said, am I invested in all that stuff? No, no, what I'm saying is you can have all that stuff. You just got to go about the right way. Amen. Now, what's the right way? Well, it's real easy, verse 33. Verse 33 says what? But seek ye first. One person's reading. What does it say? But seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what does it say? And all these things shall be added to you. You know how you get all these things? Seek the kingdom first. You, you see, if you want to receive all the things I just preached about, you must invest in the kingdom of God first. It's simple. You invest in the kingdom, God will add these things to your life. I know y'all get tired of my stupid illustrations, don't you? But you know what I think? I always think, man, I'm like a little kid. I, I can't hardly keep this stuff wrapped around my mind, so I know y'all can't either. But then I get done, I hope, I hope this illustration made sense to them. They're like, well, that was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so I want to give you the illustration. We're going to picture this thing, whatever this is called, jar, that's what I'm going to call it, jar, is your life. Every person in here, every person online watching, this is you. Nothing in it, just you. Just an empty jar. You see, that's how our lives are. They're empty, right? We fill them, and I said it in the beginning of the service, we invest every day in something. We invest in our lives. Now, this is us, and I want you to picture that this sand that I have, just some brown sand, this is the comforts that we all want in our lives. It's the stuff that we all want in our lives. That's what this is. And as you get married and you grow up, you know what you start thinking? Man, I need some of this stuff in my life, don't you? We go out, I got to get me a pool, and I got to get me some new furniture, and I got to get me that truck. Somebody parked a truck out here. It, I almost started coveting. <laughs> I was like, Jesus gave me a, no, that's his truck. <laughs> and you get this, so you want that stuff, and so you start to pour that stuff in your life. You're like, man, I got to have it. Boy, I'm getting me some stuff. Boy, I'm going to get me some stuff. Woo, I want some stuff. Preacher over here, he's preaching about some other things, though. Serving God, going to church, serving in the church. That's what he's preaching about. But you know, preacher, I just got married. I really ain't got time for all that stuff right now. You know, I'll get there. Uh oh. I'll get there one day, but I'm not there yet. So now I got a cup full of rocks. These are just old rocks. I bought them at the Hobby Lobby. Just a sack of rocks. But this represents that work, that position, and that job you got to have. How many, how many people realize you got to have a job? Yeah. Got to have paid bills, don't you? Yeah. So what do you do, man? You say, well, I'm going to get in here, man. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to get after it, boy. Get that job. Climb up the, ca uh, the, the, the company. Man, one day, boy, I'm going to get there. Boy, I'm working, working, working. Got to have money, Daniel. I mean, I got to keep moving, boy. So, so I got to let, just let me get all I can get. Right? But there's a problem with the way the life's set up, isn't it? How do I get God, my Bible reading, and my service to God in my life? What's the problem? 
won't fit. Fill up to the top. Ain't no room. Can't get them in there. They're on the outside. He said, preacher, I got to have all this stuff. I want all this stuff. And you can. But what did I say in the beginning? But seek ye first the kingdom of God. You see, if we'll take our service to God and our church attendance, if we'll take our service in the church and our working and our, and our, and our relationship with Jesus really serious, and we'll put them in our life first, well, we can do some things different, can't we? You know, then we can go over here and get that job we got to have, right? Got to have it. I mean, I ain't saying quit your job because you need money. Sure, we ain't paying you to come to church here. <laughs> got to have it. These are kind of loud. But you got to put them in here. Get your life in here. Get all your stuff, all that responsibility, all that stuff your mom and dad warned you about. All that position you want, that new job, all that stuff, right? Man, you just keep on putting it in your life, right? You say, but preacher, what about them golf clubs? What about them four-wheelers, them side-by-sides, that shotgun I wanted? Oh, you can have those too. You can have them too. You go first with God. Then you can start pouring this stuff into your life. And you know what you'll notice? Man, you'll notice there's room for it. Amen. You'll notice, man, look at here. What's going on? I, I can have it all? Oh, you can have it all. But what's the, what's the, what's the secret? The secret is the order. The secret is what goes in first. All of a sudden, you can have a life that includes everything you ever wanted. It can include all the stuff you needed. It can include all the stuff you desire. But the difference is in this life and that life is the order in which it went. Right. You see, I'm afraid that most Christians are like this. They spend their life accomplishing all this in their life. They got all the stuff and they got all the position and they got all the comfort. But there ain't no God in their life. Come on. Ain't no God in their life. But how about this? How about you have a life that's got all the position, that's got all the stuff, but still has got God inside of it. How about that? Can you have that? Are you okay with that in your life? Yeah. When I was putting this demonstration together at my house yesterday, uh, I didn't have, I, I did this, and, and you know, everybody see how that, when I, when I do this, I can just pour the rocks back out of it. You know, I can just reach in there and pull all the rocks out, then I can pour the sand out, right? But when you do it this way, you can't do that, can you? I don't know what you call this. This is what I call it. I got my wife's colander. Does anybody know what that is? Like a little pot. It's got holes in the bottom of it. So I, I put it over top of it, and I poured it through there, and I sifted it. Does that make sense? I sifted it, and all the sand went in the bowl, and then I was just left with rocks, and then left, left with those little, the little styrofoam balls, right? How many people realize that when you die and I die, that Matt Burrell is going to stand before God. And the Bible says that there's going to be an account given for my life. An account given. How many of you realize that God is going to sift Matt Burrell's life? He's going to pour in everything I am and everything I've done and every resource he's given me. He's going to pour every bit of it in the sifter and he's going to be in the sift that thing. And he's going to see all the junk that Matt's gotten. He's going to see all the junk that Matt's bought. He's going to see all the stuff Matt's done that has absolutely no value. But I'm just hoping, Daniel, I really am. I'm hoping because I put him in here first. That as the sifting gets done, he's going to look down and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see something right here. It's something he did for me. Oh, wait, here's another one. Oh, it's little. It's little. But man, look, there's another one. He did something for me. And he's going to say, oh, I found two more. He's going to take those things over and he's going to put it up on a cabinet. And he's going to say, this is my glory because he did it for me. And then all the rest of Matt's life would just be swept off into the garbage because it did not matter and it did not pay off. Amen. Only those things that are done for God have eternal value. That's right, that's right. And church, I want to encourage you, if, I, if you were honest today, and you look down into the jar of your life, is God the first thing in there? Or is it other things? Are you investing in the kingdom first? Or are you investing in other things? Church, I want you to know that you can have it all. If you seek the kingdom of God first, all these things 
shall be added unto you. God wants to give you good things. God wants you to have a great life. God wants us to enjoy this life we live. But he wants us to seek him first and invest in the kingdom first. You say, what does he want me to invest in that kingdom? Everything you are, everything you've got, anytime you can. He wants all of you. He wants to be at the bottom of your life. And I hope, I hope you're here. And you leave this door and you say, man, I can't done a lot of things right in my life, but I can put God at the bottom of my life. I can seek the kingdom first. And church, if you do that, I promise you, it is a game changer for your life. And at the end of your life, when everything's said and done, what is important will last and it'll still be there. It'll still be valuable and it will live on for eternity in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we just ask you, God, today to help us put you at the bottom of our lives. God, help us to invest in the kingdom of God and to seek the kingdom first. God, I pray that you would challenge every person here. Speak to every heart. Speak to every life. God, everyone that's watching online right now, God, I ask you that they would make a decision to invest in you first and to place you at the bottom of their lives. God, we love you today. Lord, help us, we pray, to serve you in a deeper and a greater way. In 